Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Nonprofit Show. We're thrilled you're here. We're even more thrilled that we are in day two of a drill down with Eleanor Ellie Hume, one of the wonderful masterminds over at Part Time Controller. We're going to be talking with Ellie about the top 10 issues nonprofit boards need to monitor. Now, Ellie, monitor's my word, monitor's not your word. Tell us why before we get into the second day. Yeah, so I really wanted to talk about it from the context of um, things that board members maybe take for granted or um, maybe us or organizations assume board members know. And so kind of going from that direction, yeah, we need to monitor it. And I think from that perspective, be aware and so that we don't make a lot of assumptions and take things for granted. I love it. Well, I think it's a, it's a great way to frame this up. Another thing that's a wonderful thing to frame up are our co-hosts. We have an amazing panel of co-hosts that come from around the country. I didn't put anyone on today because I just wanted to be with you, Ellie, because I knew this was like such a big topic, but we've been rolling them out over the last month. They are marvelous and you're going to see them um, doing even more and more shows with us. Another thing that's been amazing about the nonprofit show or the sponsors that we have and the people that have stepped up to support us, they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, your part-time controlly, where Ellie Hume joins us from, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Okay, Ellie, before we get deep into this, Tell us how many people now work for YPTC. So we are a national firm that is now close to 700 staff members. We're, we're inching up to the 700 mark, um, and we have staff in almost all 50 states. We're, we're very close to 50 states. It's incredible. Amazing. Well, you know, I'm going to say I knew you when when YPTC, the, the founder, Eric Frank, um, wow, I am so proud of you all. And this really speaks volumes about how powerful you are and in, in the work that you do. I think one of the things that I want to start before we get into drill down day two is I want to really briefly go through what we talked about yesterday. And you said the first five of the top 10 issues were everybody needs to know the mission statement. We need, we need to understand governance. We need to be able to understand financial statements. We need to also recognize that philanthropy and fundraising is a team sport, not just for those people in that one cubicle, but for all of us. And then to really, you spend some interesting time with that conflict of interest. So if you weren't with us, make sure you go back and view that episode because um, it, it, I just thought it was riveting and, and I think it's really, really important. Let's start today, day two of our drill down about what nonprofit boards really need to be thinking about and recognizing. I won't use the word monitor. <laughs> 501c status. What does that mean? Well, so what I wanted to really talk about here is that there are several different IRS statuses that a nonprofit can have. And we often talk in terms of the traditional 501c3. That's our charities where donors make their contributions and they get a tax deduction for it, but there's a little bit of a limitation on a 501c3. They can't really lobby, maybe to a, a minimal extent. Yeah. Um, so that kind of sets them apart. There are other very common types of 501Cs that people need to be aware of. And as board members need to understand what type of organization that you're serving on and what's allowed and what's not allowed. Um, and just for this um, kind of high level conversation, I just wanted to mention 501C4s. This is a little bit of um, a type of an advocacy organization, so they can do a little bit more towards um, lobbying, but I, I use that word very loosely, and lawyers would probably hate that I'm even saying that word <laughs> in this yeah, context. Well, because because it's perilous. It's perilous. You have to understand what you can and what you can't do. Right. You have to understand what you can and you can't do, and there definitely are definitions for these things, but 
um, in the context of this, contributions are not tax deductible for a C4. And I think that that's something maybe board members don't necessarily um, understand fully. And so fundraising could be a bit more challenging when you're talking about a C4 because that donor is not getting something kind of in return for, for their goodwill. Um, and, and I lose that, use that loosely also. Oh my God, the lawyers are gonna have a fit over this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but and then the other type that we we see a lot of um, is a C6 mm -hmm. and these are membership organizations and they are also not tax deductible um, donations wise so you'll often see where a C6 set up a chair uh, like a foundation to go with it so they have a um, a piece where you can get a taxable deduction for part of your contribution that goes to, you know, more um, mission focused foundation type stuff. So um, that's really what I wanted to say there is we often forget that there's different kinds mm -hmm. and there are different rules around them. And we can't just assume everybody knows what that is and what they mean. And I love that you talked about that because, you know, it. there's so many nuances to this. And I think a lot of times people think, Oh, we got it. Okay, good to go. Move on. And it's like, no, you there are certain things that you have to keep compliant with, right? right. And so and I've always been fascinated before we go on to number 7 that it is the accounting sector that seems to really loop us back into that compliance. You know, from audits to just reviews, so often I see and I've seen as a board member that it's our accounting provider, our accounting service not our bookkeeping team in turn, but it's a lot of times it's more the accountants that come back in and say, okay, you know, we need to be compliant on these things. And so. Well, and to that point, I would say that there's often a sense of at a nonprofit, you've got volunteers or board members who are helping with the accounting that aren't aware of the compliance. So they're leaning too much too heavily on the auditors to provide that guidance and support for the compliance. And that's one of the things that I think sets YPTC apart is that we, we make sure our staff understands the compliance aspects so they can keep their clients in kind of in line all year long as opposed to waiting to be reprimanded at the end by the auditors for not doing something. Right. No, I, and I agree. I, I mean, I see, I see that with all of your different departments from, you know, data viz communication to you know, helping develop board uh, board members to all of the different things that your team uh, does. Mm -hmm. it, it's more than just the debits and the credits, although those are important. They are very important. <laughs> okay, let's go on to number seven, item seven. And you're talking about board committees. How yeah. does that factor in? Well, so it's not just a board that helps an organization run, right? We talked about board governance, um, yesterday. And there are a lot of roles and responsibilities around just compliance and governance of the organization. But the board also helps oversee and run the operations and programs of the business, right? Nonprofits are a business. They need advisors. And the board acts in this advisory capacity through these committees. And also to reiterate one of the things I said yesterday, being on a board is like a job, should be treated like a job, and you have specialties within your jobs. And board committees are those specialties. So you might have a fundraising committee that helps in that respect that we talked about yesterday, since it's not just the director's, um, you know, development director or executive director's job to fundraise. You might have a program committee that so helps support, you know, are we doing the right things? Um, you know, are we making the right decisions about our programs? Are we, those kinds of things. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that with sustainability coming up as well. But that's what I mean by committees. You got a finance committee that takes a little bit more responsibility over ensuring that we're compliant with finances, even though overall it's the full board, the committee digs in a little bit deeper, gets more familiar with the details and helps um, in a more granular way than the whole board would. You know, I appreciate that you brought that up because I don't think that we talk about that enough. And when I think back uh, more than a now than a thousand episodes uh, of the nonprofit show, we haven't really had folks that came on and really kind of dovetailed that into the overall strategic importance of, go of governance and leadership. And mm -hmm. I would say 
that you can tell a lot of times new board members, they're kind of shocked when they, they're like, oh, wait, I have to serve on a committee or two, you know, in addition to the board that that is for some people somewhat of, um, you know, like a little disconcerting because it's more work. And I think what you said, it's more granular work. It's more in-depth work. It's not just rubber stamping. It's you, you got to be a lot more involved. So I appreciate you bringing that up. I really, really do. I think that's a, a powerful thing. Let's get on to the, and this is, I'm going to add a little bit of a dun, 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 dun. Strategic planning. You love it or you hate it, depending on the day, depending on how you get there. Yeah. Talk to us about this. So I think sometimes leadership at the organization, the executive director, the management team often thinks, hey, the board's supposed to help us with strategic planning. And the board is sitting over here thinking, well, 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 you're just supposed to bring me the strategic plan and I'll decide if I like it and if I approve it, if we think this is a good to go for the organization. And we can't think that way. It is a collaboration. Um, board members absolutely have to take part in the strategic planning of the organization. That's the big picture, right? And um, and this also means, and I'm tying it back to financial management because you know that's what I love, being involved with the budget, right? And understanding what the long-term um, focus is, not just this year's budget, but the next few years. Are we going to um, do things that make sense for our organization? And um, are we planning appropriately for what we need to be accomplishing based on our mission? So then let me ask you this chicken and egg kind of scenario. Do we do our budget first? And then go do, you know, do the strategic plan or how, I mean, I agree with you. We need to like work with these tools together, but how do we do that? That's so fascinating. I can't believe you asked me that question because that is t perfect. It's not a really chicken and egg, but um, strategic plans are often a very thoughtful exercise, right? Yeah. We're documenting um, what programs we want to do and how are we going to accomplish these things. But it's finances have to go hand in hand. Yeah. So you can be theoretical and plan yeah. all the brilliant things you want to do. But if you can't put together a plan that says, how the heck are we going to pay for this? <laughs> then you have no strategic plan. So maybe the, the theory and the conversation of the strategic plan comes first, but you've got to quickly be putting together the numbers that make sense to go with what you hope to accomplish because the two of them added together are really the true holistic strategic plan. Okay, cool. Well, I appreciate you, you know, talking about that because I agree with you. It's like really easy to, to come up with these, you know, grandiose plans and then Part of the reason why they don't succeed is because they're not funded and they're not fundable. Maybe even that's even worse. Let's talk about issues of, of sustainability, because, again, this is somewhat of a new theory mindset for the board to be thinking about. Um, what do you see here, Ellie? Well, I think, you know, we talked a little bit about um, the board's responsibility in terms of securing adequate resources. Mm -hmm. And we just talked about strategic planning and making sure that there's adequate resources to deliver on your plan. Well, you have to also not only think about this year, but for the long term. And how do we keep doing the things that we need to be doing to serve whatever community it is that we're serving? And what if a program is no longer appropriate? How do we sunset it and do something different, right? So those are things to think about in terms of sustainability. And it's um, also succession planning goes along with this. I think that, um, you know, there's, there's this situation where the executive director thinks, oh, the board is probably planning behind, you know, they're probably doing some succession planning if I leave. And then the board is sitting over here going, well, um, the executive director would help us find their replacement if they did decided to leave. So then nobody does anything, right? It's it's kind of one of those committees that we should yeah. really be thinking about a succession planning that some effort is dedicated to 
um, leadership succession. And I, and I say leadership because it's the entire management team that we need to be considering. Mm -hmm. And each leader within the organization, let's say the CFO or controller, they need to be planning for succession within their team, right? So it's a trickle down effect. The board has to plan specifically at the executive director level, but they also need to support the executive director at planning the other leadership roles and then trickling it down to everyone within the organization. You know, we've seen a ton of turnover in the nonprofit world. Um, I, I know we feel it um, substantially in finance functions because that's clients call us constantly because they lost a staff member and they don't know what to do about it. Right, right. Well, and I think that, you know, when you look at job dissatisfaction, a lot of times you will hear from employees that say, there was no room for advancement. I was never going to go anywhere. There were no options, you know, and and whether that's true or not, if that's the perception, yes. that, that's part of this ecosystem of, of looking at what your bench is, right? Um, and we Absolutely. know people are retiring. We know people are spending less time at their jobs. And so we've got to be thinking about this. And I love that you talked about it. I would also add in there, not just for management, but for board, you know, the board that should be part of that leadership future look is who are we recruiting? Who do we need? What are we missing? Right? Yes. Yes. Same with the people. And that ties in really nicely to the last point about advocacy. Okay. Um, is it's everyone's job, board and management, to keep up with developments in the field of whatever the organization serves and be thinking about how do we continue to sustain and build our resources at people-wise as well as financial-wise, but that includes that board succession piece and continuing to build new board members how many terms do you have? How yeah. long should a board member serve? Are they being effective? Are they not? And part of that comes with, are they taking their job seriously as a board member and yeah. advocating for the mission of the organization to add up to all the things we've just talked about, the sustainability, the planning, the governance, the everything that we've addressed today really adds up to making sure everybody knows what their role is, um, not assuming that everybody knows that you're being explicit <laughs> and asking questions. You know, it's two-sided, right? Everybody's got to ask questions and be honest with their answers so that then there can be education and support so that everybody can just keep being the right advocates for the organizations that they support and work for. You know, you said something really interesting that kind of sparked something um, in my brain. And that was, and I think this is true. You said, you know, the board is like, well, certainly the CEO is thinking about that. And then the CEO is like, well, certainly the board is thinking about that. And it, early on, one of our very beginning conversations we had with you several years ago, I remember you told me, you said, Julia, a lot of this comes down to communication. And we think numbers and columns and the accounting thing, but at some level, it's the human spirit of communication. And it's like you started off our conversation yesterday. We make assumptions. Yes. Not always good. We definitely don't communicate enough. Yeah. Um, and I think it's gotten worse yeah. since everything is virtual. You know, I, Look, I love all these wonderful technology tools that are out here to help share information and, you know, even those board portals, right? There's so many of these great things that you can post your information for your board. Everybody can see the agenda um, ahead of time. Everybody can read the last meeting's minutes. Everybody is, can look at the board book and read the financials. And I say that loosely. <laughs> You know what I said yesterday, um, but it then takes out all of the actual conversation and real communication um, because, again, you've just posted it and just because somebody opened it 
there's another person that made an assumption, well, they must have read it because they opened the file or they must have read it because I posted it where it belongs and that's their job. They're supposed to go get it for our board meeting and they're supposed to come prepared. And so staff at an organization is doing so much work to prepare for board meetings. And then they're kind of let down when the board member actually isn't prepared, has no idea what they're talking about, didn't read anything in advance, didn't come prepared with appropriate questions to ask. Yeah. And I think that's really, you know, I think a good theme of everything that we kind of talked about today is the communication and sometimes lack thereof mm -hmm. uh, and how we can just do a better job at all of that and, and stop making these assumptions or taking for granted what people know and don't know. Right. Well, it's been a really amazing theme, and I love that YPTC would join us for two days so that we could talk about these 10 um, very important issues that maybe wouldn't have been identified. Like if you had said, Julia, write down a list of 10, um, and, and maybe you, you chose five other people to do this, I think we would have gotten damn close, maybe 80%. But there were there were a couple surprises in here, um, and I really appreciate that because they're all so critical to how we run and steward successful organizations. And so, thank you, thank you, Ellie, for really coming forward with us on on this. I'm gonna um, throw a little bit of a curveball, so get your baseball mitt up, get it get it ready to go. Um, over the trajectory of your career, do you think that these top tens have changed? So I'm going to admit something to you. Mm -hmm. I did not come up with these top 10. Okay. I used the help of technology. Okay, awesome. Awesome. To put me on the right track for a conversation with you about this. Okay, awesome. I asked ChatGPT. Good, good. And I went to board source which I think is a really fantastic resource to any nonprofit organization. And they don't pay me to say that. I don't have any affiliation with them. Um, I just think they're an amazing resource. Yeah. Yeah. And I found a couple of, I said like two or three top 10 lists mm -hmm. and they all were related to each other. Right. They were yeah. so interrelated. So I took them and mashed them up to come up with, this list um, uh, for our conversation. So, you know, it's not rocket science. These have not changed. Right. They're the same topics that we keep talking about over and over again. And I mean, is that is that the definition of insanity, right? You do the same thing <laughs> over and over again and expect different results. Um, yeah, it is true. But I think what's even more important is that, and what I really appreciate what you did for us over these past two days, is that you pulled them all together, right? Because a lot of times we talk about these things independently and mm -hmm. then we don't really see how they weave together. And that's what I have really enjoyed about, you know, these two days with you, Ellie, because you have woven them together and and we know when that occurs, it, we're stronger, you know, our organizations are more uh, impactful and we, we uh, support, like one thing, works towards the other right you, very few of these things that you brought up to us are one and done right they they link together eleanor ellie hume regional director of your part-time controller while she is based in new york she's all over this country working with nonprofits, a lot of different organizations but at the core all need help and they need strong guidance especially when it comes to their financial decisions and financial management. You can check out YPTC.com and you will learn so much about what you need to know and maybe things that you don't know. They have a lot of content and a lot of content that is free. So whether you're a client or working with one of their almost 700 providers and, and specialists, you can get this amazing content and they're always adding to it. And they really are the thought leaders in nonprofit accounting. So I can't recommend it uh, highly enough. Um, another thing I want to make sure that we spend time on, and that is to thank our amazing sponsors. And they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, 
JMT Consulting and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Ellie, I tell this story that when I was first getting started, um, I had the opportunity to meet with your founder, Eric Freint. He came to my community uh, because he was serving on a board for the Grand Canyon. He stopped by my office. He was in this exquisite three-piece wool suit. And I was like, oh, Mr. Freint, take off your jacket and your vest. You're going to expire in this heat you know, because it was so damn hot. But he was all tight, you know, tidy and buttoned up. And he, we were interviewing him and he took his finger and he said, what do I do to get my logo on this screen? And no one had ever asked me that before. And I was like, I could sell sponsorships. I could get sponsorships. And that is really the start of this journey for me um, because he had the faith in what we were doing and what we were saying and what you know our vision was. Maybe it was heat stroke. I don't know because it was hot. But that it must have been because I've never seen Eric Frank in a three piece suit. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, it was wool and he was headed up to the canyon, which is like another it's like a five, four, four or five hour drive. And he was going to be in that suit. And I was like, well, do you need to change? And he's like, no, you know, I was like, oh, my God. But yeah, it was it's a really cool memory of mine. I will forever be grateful and I will always connect, you know, my success um, and our team's success to your organization because of that. And uh, it was a light bulb that went off that literally changed the trajectory of my, my company. So why you, Joyce, appreciate that. No, it's a wonderful thing. I just had to witness that. Hey, everybody, um, Ellie Hume, I swear to God, you're like one of my faves. You need to come back on anytime. And anytime. Uh, yeah, we need to always, you always teach me new things and get me jazzed up. So I'm really, really excited. Hey, everybody, as we end every episode of the non nonprofit show, we end with this message, and it goes like this, to stay well so you can do well. Thanks so much, Ellie. We'll see you again shortly.